Mike from Mike and Mike's Guitar Bar, and we're here to talk about the Golden Cowboy Eddie Dean's National 1155. Eddie Dean is known as the Golden Cowboy, seventh son of a seventh son, born in the seventh month of 1907, and both Gene Autry and Roy Rogers credited him as the best singing cowboy of all time. Eddie kind of hits every corner of the industry. So he started on radio in the 30s. He was in National Barn Dance. He was on uh, Gene Autry's Melody Ranch. And then 1934, moves to Hollywood, stars in 55 Westerns, 20 of which he, uh, he gets to be the lead in, and then has a broad recording career that spans decades. And what kind of sets Eddie apart from a lot of the other singing cowboys is that he wrote the majority of his own material. So about 80% of the songs that Eddie's singing are things that he wrote, uh, many with his wife, who he called Dearest. The biggest hit for Eddie was 55's uh, I Dream of a Hillbilly Heaven, which got a lot of traction a few years later in 61 when Tex Ritter picked up that track and then uh, kind of propelled it into a standard for country music. And so the guitar that we're going to talk about today comes right on the heels of his biggest hit. The guitar comes from 1957, and Eddie had everything on this guitar done custom to reflect his status as the Golden Cowboy. So we're talking custom gold backsides and neck, gold hardware, custom inlay, custom bound headstock, and naturally we have Eddie Dean's signature on the custom pickguard. So aside from the singing cowboy provenance of the guitar, uh, there's so much history baked into the National Gibson collaboration that we just want to unpack that a little bit. National Guitar Company starts in 1927 and then in 1940 becomes Valco. So when the Valco company came into existence, they kept National as their flagship brand. The thing about the National Guitar Company, though, is at that time they didn't have the facilities to produce any semi-hollow or hollow instruments, any acoustic guitars, so they would contract that out. So Gibson supplied National with complete J45 bodies for the 1155 model. What makes the Eddie Dean guitar so unique on multiple levels then is that you have two of the largest guitar companies of the 1950s, two absolute heavyweights, National and Gibson, collaborating on an instrument. So you have that National neck which is bolted to the Gibson J45 body. And then with the E suffix model, you have a pickup that's mounted through the last fret of the fretboard. So you can kind of think about this as a Gibson J160E, their electrified version of the J45, but with a solid spruce top instead of the ply tops that Gibson used. What we're looking at with the Eddie Dean guitar is both a Gibson one-off and a national one-off for a specific individual with custom features head to toe. Beyond kind of the singing cowboy era, Eddie's career you know, follows that same path. There's not really the same opportunities for, for film and television that there were in the 30s through the 50s when he was really at the height of his powers. But he continues to play uh, at least through the late 80s. We can find concert footage of him. And his voice stays incredibly pure in his 80s. It's so cool to hear this guy just slaying it. Later in life, Eddie is one of the founding members of the Academy of Country Music and Right after he passes in 99, at the ripe old age of 91, he uh, also received a star on the Palm Springs Walk of Fame. And we don't really know where this national was throughout that time. We came into this and have kind of put the pieces together of the story uh, looking backwards on his career. But what was really neat about this guitar is it came with so many pieces of that puzzle. Headshots of him from I think around like late 40s, early 50s. Three of Eddie's records, including his big hit, I Dream of a Hillbilly Heaven. A signed card, my favorite piece that comes with the guitar. To Nora Zaki, honor student, sincerely Eddie Dean. Also comes with a second signed piece, which is the sheet music for I Dream of a Hillbilly Heaven. And lastly, we have three custom pick guards, which we had commissioned specifically for this guitar. There was one thing that was missing from this guitar when we received it, and that was the pick guard, which was also unique to this guitar in that it's screwed onto the body instead of being glued on like a standard model 1155E. How we knew what this pick guard needed to look like, as there were no reference photos, was the way that the light had aged the lacquer on top of the guitar left the imprint of Eddie's signature 
So with that information, we were able to take that signature, build a font file, and then our friend, appropriately named Cowboy Mike, was able to create a custom font file for that. Then we sent that to Quick Guards. We got to imagine what this guard might have been for Eddie's guitar. Of the three guards we had commissioned, we have one in Tortoise, one in Gold Sparkle, and one in back-painted Gretsch Gold appropriate to the legacy of the Golden Cowboy himself. One of my bucket list guitars that I've always wanted to have at the guitar bar was a genuine guitar that belonged to a singing cowboy. So being able to have one of Eddie's personal guitars that had such a rich history with National and with Gibson and to, to bring it back to uh, its, its full original presentation, that really speaks to our mission at the company to be stewards of this instrument and you know, leave it better than we found it. And it, it really just checks every box for us as far as uh, vintage restoration and getting to present the history of something like this. Mm -hmm.